Welcome back to the garden. Today we're going to go ahead and put together a trellis, maybe five, and I'm very, very excited about that because as far as I'm concerned, a garden trellis is actual magic. This thing right here is going to somehow turn one foot of horizontal growing space into seven feet of vertical growing space. And the only side effect that we're gonna have to deal with for gaining all that extra growing space is healthier plants. That is magic. Now, as you're probably already aware, there are more garden trellis designs out there than there are varieties of tomatoes. So today we're keeping it very nice and simple and going with a tested, tried and true design that I've used many times in the past to pretty good effect. Only this year, we are actually using stronger, tougher materials that were recommended in jar Josh Satin's video, Trellis to Make You Jealous. By the way, absolutely phenomenal video. If you haven't watched it, I will link to it in the description. Go check it out, really worth your time. In this video though, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a quick look at exactly how to put this whole thing together, one minute or less, then we'll go into a full materials list, then we'll do a deep, detailed, step-by-step -step build guide and usage guide, and we'll finish up by talking about a few ways you may even want to take it to the next level. If you don't already have your trellis design locked down for this year, go ahead and follow along. I think you're going to like this one. Before we move on, here's a 10 second look at how you actually put this sucker together. We're taking our shot, bring what you got. We're going all the way to the top. We will hear the sound of one million people screaming our names when we're back. Okay, so there are a whole host of reasons I like this style of trellis, but I'm gonna try and narrow them down to just five quick reasons in an effort to convince you if you know you need to be convinced. First off, and probably foremost, it's just, it's really versatile, and I like that a lot. It's obviously perfect for tomatoes. That's probably the primary use case that, that we're using it for, but you could just as easily use it for eggplants and peppers and tomatillos, things in the nightshade family, but also you can use it for things like vining peas that like to grow up a single pole or a single, a single string, just like we're using it for those vining tomatoes, or you you could replace those strings with just a simple nylon trellis net and I've used these a million times they work great and then you've got a really good trellis for more horizontally growing vining plants things like beans or malabar spinach. Two it is very nice and durable it's got primarily metal components and then the rest of it is very strong PVC. Three it is very simple to build and I, I actually mean that I'm not one of those people who's going to say it's easy to make and then bust out like a tractor and a table saw or whatever madness you see in a lot of these build guides. Almost impossible to mess this up. Just, just be careful as you're building it. It is really, really very easy. And then reason number four, it is actually movable. I can take it down at the end of the season. I can change the spacing next season if I want to. I can put it in a different part of the garden. It's actually really difficult to find a trellis system that is both very strong like this one is, but also easy to move around. So that's a big plus for us. Five, it's a really proven design. I've used it many, many times in the past, granted with different lesser materials, but the same basic design, it works great. Before we actually get started building, let me just show you the materials that you're gonna need in order to build one 20 foot section of trellis. First and foremost, the star of the build, for each 20 foot section of trellis, you're gonna want three T-posts. I've got seven foot uh, T-posts right here. I would go with at least six feet if you can manage it. Eight, nine, 10 feet are going to be even more ideal, but obviously the height can be a little bit cumbersome at that point. Then for again, every 20 foot section, we're gonna want two of these 10 foot EMT pipes, electrical conduit pipes. I went with a half inch option because they're much, much cheaper. But if you want it to be a little bit more rigid and maybe even look a little bit nicer and maybe last a little bit longer, you can go with a three quarter inch option. Again, they just cost a little bit more. Then to put together those two pipes, we're just gonna need an EMT conduit pipe coupler. Obviously I've got a half inch coupler here because I want a half inch pipe, but just make sure that the size of your coupler corresponds to the size of your pipes. Next up, I have two of these one and a quarter inch PVC T fittings. And the reason that I have two of these rather than only using the T on the middle post is by having a T fitting on the end post as well as the middle post, just gives you a little bit more flexibility and where exactly you put those T posts. Finally, in terms of materials, I've just got one of these one and a quarter inch PVC 90 degree elbow fittings. And this is the one that I'm going to put on the T post where I actually enter the garden. And the reason I did this is obviously with one of these elbow fittings, the EMT conduit pipe can't poke through there and catch an eye or whatever. I just feel like it's a little bit safer. So I grabbed one of these for one of the pipes. In terms of tools, we've just got three things, a tape 
tape measure just to mark out where you actually want your T-post. We've got a screwdriver just in order to tighten this uh, EMT pipe conduit coupler. Last up in terms of tools, we've got the big boy, the post driver. These actually run for like 40 to 50 bucks on the cheap end, so I borrowed ours from a family friend. And if you are able to, I definitely recommend doing the same. Before I actually get started, I just wanna remind you to make sure that you are not working and burying where there may be utility lines. At least in the United States, you can call 811 for a free service and they will come out and check just to make sure that it is safe to be doing this work in whatever area you've got it planned for. My rows are not exactly 20 feet long, so unfortunately I can't put the post at exactly 10 foot, 10 foot, 10 foot. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark out exactly where I want each of the posts to live. You'll probably want to do the same instead of eyeballing it. All right, next up, go ahead and use that post driver to install the T-post. Just make sure that it's straight and then go ahead and measure it when you're done to make sure that each of your posts are the same distance from the ground. Use any old screwdriver you've got laying around to securely tighten the two conduit pipes together using that coupler. <laughs> I would strongly recommend you tug on the two sides after you've screwed them in just to make sure that it is actually nice and tight. I've had them fall apart on me. Okay, next up, go ahead and lay that horizontal pipe through the two open PVC T-fittings and then cap it off with the shoulder fitting just to make sure everything is nice and safe. I can't stand to have the horizontal pipe mobile, so I've gone ahead and just grabbed some foam from the dollar store to keep it in place. Honestly, though, I've never really seen anyone else do that, so I don't know, maybe it just doesn't bother anyone else and it only bothers me. Unfortunately, y'all, my tomatoes are far from ready to trellis up, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring one out here and just try and give you the best idea I can. Bear with me, I think, I think you're gonna get it, though. It's not too, too complicated. So after we've got the tomato transplanted in, I'm just gonna tie a length of poly twine or mason's line to the conduit pipe and then tie it straight down to the base of the plant. I don't like to use a short stake at the base of the plant like a lot of folks will do just because I think that's a hazard in the garden. You could fall, you could trip on it, or you could even poke your eyeball on it. I, I just don't like to use them. So I go ahead and tie it straight to the plant itself, but you could also go ahead and put in like a garden staple right there and then tie it to the staple if you wanted it to not be attached to the plant. And then as the season goes on, I will train the leader up the string just by like naturally curving it around that line. And then the other thing I'll do is just come out with some like natural jute fiber twine and tie it off in a couple places, like literally tie the tomato leader to that mason's line, to the poly twine, just in case that natural twining effect comes loose in the wind. It's kind of like a fail safe. And that is actually it. It's really that simple. All you have to do from that point on is make sure that you have your tomatoes well pruned and that you are securely fastening them to that poly twine as the season goes on. Uh, if you're interested, I do, I do have a video on uh, pruning cherry tomatoes. I'll link it up there some, somewhere. Normally I would ask you to like this video if you did like this video, but we're not gonna do that today. Instead, I think you should go check out Josh Satin's Trellis to Make You Jealous video because without his example, without that video, myself and many, many other gardeners wouldn't have these trellises. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to show you what we are building on our little homestead if he hadn't done that work in the first place. So yeah, go check it out and support that video. Thanks so much, let's get back to this trellis. Okay, we're not quite done yet though. I do wanna talk about a few future enhancements just to take this to the next level. So one thing I am testing out this year is using these line locks. These are actually what I use for my backpacking tarps. And I'm just gonna be using them to give myself the option of adding more slack to the line. Basically, this would allow me to release that extra string and then slide the plant down the pipe. Basically, it's just a replacement for the S hooks that a lot of folks use to build a lower and lean tomato trellis system. I am also going Going to try and grow some vining plants up the tea post themselves just again to make them look a little bit nicer and fit in with the garden maybe in a more natural fashion this year i'm just going to plant pole beans at the base of the tea post but next year i think i'll probably go ahead and try and plant in some perennial evergreen ornamental plants maybe like a clematis or a honeysuckle I, I would love suggestions if you have any suggestions of something tough enough to grow up a tea post what do, what do you think would this be helpful in your own garden is this something you're interested in maybe trying out or are you going with something totally different let me know in the comments. As always, y'all, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one. And until then, happy gardening.